Thank you. I will note, Mr. Chair, I, I find it a bit disconcerting that we're talking about this amendment and sub amendment, uh, this motion amendment and sub amendment in general. Just given certainly even just today the latest news on the India affair, it would appear that Canadian officials, for example, I mean, this uh, sub amendment is interesting because it talks about protecting national security, which is obviously important. And today we learned that. It would appear that national security officials in Canada leaked information to the Washington Post that Canadians weren't made aware of, that Washington Post journalists have apparently a greater right to know information about this India issue than Canadians. And I think that that is something that we could get into if we were studying the motion that we all agreed to, to review the India affair and bring in various deputy ministers, uh, the CSIS director, the RCMP commissioner, uh, a number of security officials and other experts to testify on some of the information they know when they knew it, and why is it that the National or the Washington Post knew before Canadians? And I think that there's a number of issues, even just that aside, that could fill in a lot of the blanks of this important issue that I think a lot of Canadians are seized with, particularly Canadians in the Indian community, and particularly the Sikh community. And it just is a bit disconcerting that we're seeing various parties play politics with this issue. Our party's been very clear where we stand on this motion in particular. That's not going to change. And certainly I, would, I do feel that we could get back to the matter at hand, which I, I do believe all parties are interested in learning more about, particularly in light of the breaking news today out of the Globe and Mail from Bob Fife. And so certainly, Mr. Chair, I, I think we should be moving on and getting back to the study at hand. In particular, for example, if we were focusing on the study that we had passed as a committee, we could be asking the commissioner today why it is that we had to learn from the Washington Post that there, the killing of an individual in Winnipeg has been linked to the whole India affair in general. Why is it that we had to learn in American news and that the RCMP didn't release that to the Canadian public. I would like to know that, amongst the other things. So we could be doing that today. Uh, instead, we're going to be focusing on playing politics. Unfortunately, this motion from the NDP, uh, with presumably the Liberal support, um, we've made our position very clear on this, and that's not going to change. So I'd ask the other members of other parties to consider us getting back to the matter at hand so we can focus on the India affair. Certainly, Mr. Chair, I think that it would be worthwhile this committee to immediately uh, take up that study. I don't believe we could get to that perhaps today, but I would assume on Thursday we could move to have, or we could certainly, you could do the work to have various witnesses come and testify. Um, and certainly if we're looking at this, I do not feel, I do feel that the sub-amendment in general, um, I think that that would be, <sighs> That would be overall, I do feel that that is implied in it, but I do feel that perhaps moving it was not, in general, this motion was not in the best of faith. We've made our position clear, as I said, and I do feel that we could be focusing on the matter at hand. And I, I do believe that all members of this committee are intelligent and can fight their corners with respect and certainly have information put on the record that I think would be of public interest in the India affair issue. Um, and certainly, Mr. Chair, again, just waking up today and seeing that we can repeatedly hear, for example, from the Prime Minister and others that all these issues are classified, we can't talk about them, um, and yet it just seems, again, I don't believe this is the first time, in fact, that we're seeing <coughs> various members of the uh, American or various news outlets in the United States getting information before we got it. I believe, if you'll remember, Mr. Chair, actually, when there was that issue of the Chinese spy balloon. American news had more information about what Canadian intelligence knew than the Canadians themselves. So this isn't the first time that we're seeing issues like this. And so when we're talking about protecting national security, I would wonder what processes were followed that the Washington Post journalists were entitled to some of this information and that we weren't. And I do think that that is an interest of this committee, uh, certainly as the Public Safety National Security Committee. And then it should be with haste that we have a number of these witnesses come to testify. Perhaps we'll have them testify more than once, uh, given the importance of this issue. So certainly I know we'll go through this today, uh, but we've made our position very clear on this matter. We do not feel that uh, this motion reflects um, the best interest of the duty of the opposition to hold the government accountable. Uh, that is our position, and that's not going to change, Mr. Chair. So again, I'd ask, um, I'd ask other parties to consider that, and if we can get to work as soon as Thursday on questioning members of CSIS and the RCMP and others, I think that would be uh, of great public benefit to per further understanding the details of this, of this India affair, Mr. Chair. So I'll leave it at that for now, and I ask that you put me back on the speaking list.